When you consume a glass of water, it's quickly absorbed into your bloodstream through tiny blood vessels called capillaries in your small intestine. The bloodstream carries water throughout your body, delivering it to cells and tissues where it's used for various functions like hydration, controlling temperature, and nutrient transport. Your kidneys filter waste products from your body with the assistance of water, such as urea, uric acid, creatinine, excess vitamins, medications and their metabolites, environmental toxins, and excess minerals like sodium. Urea comes from breaking down proteins in our bodies to get energy, but having too much of it can be a problem. Our kidneys help by sending it out with pee. If there's too much urea in our blood, it can mess with our brain and cause confusion, memory issues, and trouble focusing. In really serious cases, it can even lead to seizures. If there's an excessive amount of urea, it can induce a deep sleep known as a coma, and individuals may not easily wake up. When urea and other bad stuff build up, they can mess with the signals in our nerves, making our muscles move on their own. Ironically, the kidneys, which are meant to eliminate urea, can be damaged when there's an excess amount of urea. High urea levels can contribute to oxidative stress by increasing free radical production. Free radicals can damage the proteins, DNA, and other components of heart cells. Oxidative stress can contribute to the stiffening of the heart muscle, making it less able to pump blood effectively. This can lead to excessive strain on the heart, resulting in irregular heartbeats and eventual heart failure. To complicate matters further, uremia, linked to high urea levels, can result in fluid buildup in the lungs, leading to difficulty breathing and respiratory failure. Uric acid comes from certain foods and your body's natural processes. But if it does not go away, it can make sharp crystals in your joints, causing a painful condition called gout. The affected joint gets red, swollen, warm, and tender. Uric acid crystals can also form in your kidneys, creating kidney stones. The presence of these stones may cause discomfort during urination, and if they reach a significant size, they can potentially interfere with the optimal functioning of your kidneys. Creatinine is a natural byproduct of creatine metabolism. Creatine plays a vital role in energy production within your muscles. As your muscles work, creatine breaks down, and creatinine is released into your bloodstream. Abnormal levels can indicate potential kidney problems. High levels could suggest reduced filtration, while low levels might point to muscle loss or decreased muscle mass. When the body has sufficient stores of vitamins, excess amounts are often excreted through urine. However, there can be consequences if some vitamins are not properly excreted due to inadequate water intake. For example, excessive amounts of vitamin C are usually excreted in urine, but a high amount in the body may cause digestive upset and diarrhea. Medications you take are broken down by the liver, and when we drink enough water, their byproducts are excreted in urine. Accumulation can interfere with medication efficacy or cause adverse effects. Breathing polluted air exposes us to harmful substances such as dust, fumes, and even heavy metals. Similarly, residues of pesticides, herbicides, or industrial pollutants can adhere to our food or be present in processed foods. Pesticides can directly hurt DNA, the genetic material in our cells. This damage results in mutations, potentially leading to uncontrolled growth and the development of cancer. Several studies suggest a link between long-term exposure to certain pesticides and an increased risk of cancer, particularly leukemia, lymphoma, and prostate cancer. Some chemicals can also mimic hormones in the body, potentially leading to reproductive problems, thyroid issues, and developmental abnormalities. When we consume an adequate amount of water, these toxins easily dissolve in it and are subsequently eliminated from our bodies through urine by the kidneys. Engaging in regular physical activity promotes sweating, providing another means for our bodies to expel some toxins. When we don't drink enough water, sodium intake exceeds the body's needs, causing it to retain extra water. This leads to increased blood volume, putting a strain on the heart and blood vessels, thereby raising blood pressure, a risk factor for heart disease, stroke, and kidney problems. An average adult loses two to three liters of water daily through urine, sweat, bowel movement, breathing, saliva, tears, and from the skin. A small amount of water evaporates from our skin even when we're not sweating. When you are dehydrated, your brain signals your body to release a hormone called antidiuretic hormone. This hormone creates channels in your kidneys, allowing your blood to absorb more water. Consequently, this can lead to darker and more concentrated urine. However, Dehydration is not just about feeling thirsty or having dark urine. It can also induce fatigue, affect your mood, decrease skin moisture, 
and lower blood pressure. When there is a lower volume of fluids in the blood vessels, there is reduced pressure exerted against the vessel walls, resulting in decreased blood pressure. This condition can be dangerous, as organs may not receive an adequate supply of oxygen and nutrients. Our brains are about 80% water, making it the most water-intensive organ in the body. Just as a car needs fuel to run smoothly, our brains require water to function at their best. Research suggests that dehydration can cause the brain to shrink for a short time. When we are dehydrated, the brain cannot replenish its water content as efficiently, leading to a slight decrease in volume. Usually drinking eight glasses of water a day is good enough if you stay active, exercise a bit, and eat different kinds of foods. However, the amount of water you need can change based on what you do every day. So let's figure out how much water is just right for you. Sweating is the body's way of cooling down during exercise. Dehydration can impair this process, putting us at risk of overheating because our body constantly working to maintain a healthy internal temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius. Enough water in our body helps flush out lactic acid, a byproduct of exercise that contributes to muscle soreness. Studies suggest that drinking water can increase lipolysis, the process by which your body breaks down fat for energy. Imagine fat as tiny balls of energy stored in your body locked in safes. When your body needs a quick burst of power, it needs to unlock those safes and break down the fat balls into usable fuel. Think of water as the key to the fat safes. When you're dehydrated, your body holds onto water, making it harder for the water to reach the safes. In this way, you will lose the extra fat while developing muscles, which is a healthy approach to weight loss. The process of breaking down protein and removing waste products from your body requires water. This is because the byproducts of protein metabolism, such as ammonia, are toxic and need to be excreted in urine. The more protein you eat, the more waste products your body needs to get rid of and the more water you'll need to do so. In addition, protein has a higher thermic effect than carbohydrates or fat. This means that your body burns more calories digesting and metabolizing protein than it does for other nutrients. If you are experiencing fatigue, headaches, or constipation, these could be signs that you are dehydrated due to a high protein diet. Fiber attracts water, causing it to swell and form a gel-like substance. This gel traps water molecules and slows down the movement of food through your digestive system. By retaining water, the gel keeps stools soft and bulky, making them easier to pass and preventing constipation. Alcohol inhibits the release of a hormone called vasopressin, which normally signals your kidneys to conserve water. With less vasopressin, your kidneys flush out more fluids, including water, electrolytes, and essential minerals. The effect translates to increased urination, leading to a significant loss of fluids that your body needs to function properly. Alcohol can also directly inhibit the activity of neurons in the hypothalamus, which is the part of the brain responsible for regulating thirst. This means that even if your body is dehydrated, you may not feel thirsty and therefore not drink enough fluids. The developing fetus relies on water for various essential functions, such as supporting cell growth, facilitating amniotic fluid production, and aiding in waste removal. As pregnancy progresses, blood volume expands by approximately 50% to accommodate the growing baby and placenta. Breast milk, a crucial source of nutrition for infants, consists of about 88% water. It's important for lactating individuals to stay adequately hydrated, as dehydration can potentially lead to a decrease in milk production, affecting infant feeding. Furthermore, dehydration during pregnancy and breastfeeding increases the risk of urinary tract infections, which are more prevalent during these phases. Research also suggests a possible association between dehydration and an elevated risk of preterm birth. As we age, we lose muscle mass and gain fat tissue. Muscle tissue is about 75% water, while fat tissue is only about 10% water. Consequently, older adults have a lower percentage of body water overall. The mechanism that signals thirst also becomes less sensitive as we age. This means that older adults may not feel thirsty even when they are dehydrated. Medications for high blood pressure or diabetes can increase fluid loss. These medications aid your body in eliminating salt and other substances through urine which can result in dehydration if you do not consume enough fluids to compensate. Your body loses water through several other means, such as the body sweats to cool down when experiencing a fever, diarrhea and vomiting expel significant water from the body. Salty and sugary foods draw water from your body to dilute them. Spicy foods stimulate sweating and increase urination, 
leading to additional water loss. If you regularly incorporate a substantial amount of hydrating fruits and vegetables into your diet, coupled with no physical activity and exposure to cooler weather conditions, you might find that your hydration needs could be less than the commonly recommended eight glasses of water. If you're still uncertain, pay attention to signs such as thirst, urine color, and other physical symptoms like dry mouth and lips, fatigue and headache, dizziness and lightheadedness, muscle cramps, and decreased urine output. 